Hi LEGO fans! Day 21 is finally here and not a moment too soon. I'm starting to get low on material. We've liberated exactly 100 gifts from their advent calendar sarcophagi and now it's time to ramp up for the big day. I can't wait to see what advent atrocities lay inside, so let's open up every door number 21 on every LEGO advent calendar. We're starting out with LEGO Friends and the key to this door is number 21. Wow, 21, almost Christmas. And what have we got here? Hopefully I'll get something better than this on Christmas Day. Um, okay, we've got a milk element, I see that. It's another one of these Winter Village stalls. Uh, obviously, money laundering going on here, so... Yeah, very festive, very green, very um, very Irish actually uh, was the first thing that came to mind. Uh, but yeah, it looks like we've got some cupcake elements. Um, I guess we're doing cupcakes and, I was going to say cookies, cupcakes and milk. Uh, is that exciting? Well, we'll find out soon. Well, if nothing more, this kept me busy for a few minutes. This has an impressive number of parts and no, I did not count them. It consists of a festive white and green cupcake stall, and a printed carton of milk. Did you know milk is the fastest liquid on Earth? It's past your eyes before you can even see it. I recently went to the International Space Station, but I couldn't find any milk for my coffee. Thankfully, another astronaut confirmed that in space, no one can here use cream. It would be nice to put the carton on the stall, but it doesn't fit. Instead of selling stolen goods, the LEGO friends are selling cupcakes, or as we say in the trade, edibles. The stall is made from green elements and white elements which show all of the fluff in the studio. Hopefully I managed to blow it all off. Cone elements support the canopy to keep the rain off the baked goods. And there's some festive floral decoration to prove that the LEGO friends are learning. It's a nice festive gift, if not a little generic. I find the fact that there's no room for the milk annoying. But hey, after today, I'm going to toss it in a plastic bag and forget it ever existed, so it doesn't really matter. To find out how many points this earns for LEGO Friends, stay tuned! Our next calendar on this wonderful Wednesday is LEGO Star Wars, and let's see if they pony up something good today. Door number 21, oh, and yes, 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 yes. Always a good day when you get a minifigure, especially good when you get one from Star Wars. I'm not sure I recognise that character though. Um, hang on, I've got a suspicion. Oh yeah, that face, that face. Oh, interesting. The, um, the, the, the the head is actually white with a face printed on. And it looks like Lego haven't totally messed this up, so that could be good. Uh, nice shiny lightsaber handle. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be um, Luke Skywalker from Hoth, or Colt, as we often call it. Uh, really nice minifigure by the looks of it, but we shall put him together and take a more detailed look. And so from LEGO Star Wars, look who it is! It's that Jedi guy who works at the Wampa Barbecue place! To be fair, it is a little bit difficult to tell with those goggles in the way. Thankfully there are two different mounting points on the helmet, and of course you would never wear it like this. Although this minifigure looks exclusive, it also appeared in 75298 Atat vs Tauntaun Microfighters. Like any self-respecting Jedi, Luke has an impressive weapon. His lightsaber is blue, and has a shiny metallic handle. This depicts Luke in his Hoth costume from The Empire Strikes Back. After his encounter with Vader in the previous movie, he had to visit the second hand store. Even with the prosthetic hand, Luke had trouble eating food with chopsticks until Yoda told him to use the forks. The legs are printed, which is a nice feature, and the torso is crisply printed, including some metallic accents. There's also some printing on the back, including some pouches, but whoa! What is that? I've not seen anything as freaky as this since Voldemort appeared on the back of Quirrell's head. Okay, so Luke may not have a conjoined twin on the back of his head, but he does have an alternate facial expression, one where all of his teeth have merged into one solid block. It's easy to make fun of Luke, after all, he did kiss his sister. But there's no doubt this is a really nice minifigure, and I'm sure the Star Wars fans will be very happy. This is going to be a tough gift to beat today. Next we have LEGO City, which is doing alright this year. It's definitely standing up against the Guardians of the Galaxy IP, but let's see what... Oh my, saying that, saying that, what have we got here? We've got a lamppost, uh, yeah, I can see immediately what this is. Yeah, it's a lamppost, part of a nice street scene, I'm sure, but as you know, we judge all of these gifts by what's behind the door on the, on the day. Uh, also looks like we might have a, a lightsaber handle in here. 
Yes, we do. Yeah, a couple of those, actually. We've got a spare, uh, I think. So, um, yeah, nice element as well. But ultimately, it's a lamppost with a bit of foliage attached to it. Let's put this together and see how it performs. So, after the generous part count afforded to us by LEGO friends, this feels a little bit underwhelming. From LEGO City, we have a slightly festive lamppost. It stands on a white jumper plate, which indicates a snowy scene. And I like the use of the lightsaber handle element, which may be the only good thing about this gift. The decoration is undoubtedly festive, but no more festive than LEGO Friends. It also looks slightly odd that we have two different shades of green here. Getting to the top has given me a light bulb moment. I think LEGO City isn't going to win today. Speaking of lights, the check engine light came on in my car today. It must be broken. I open the hood and it's definitely there. We mustn't be too hard on LEGO City. It's not that their gift is bad, it's just that all of the other calendars tried. Will this earn any points for LEGO City? We'll find out in a few minutes. Next we have Guardians of the Galaxy, a calendar which is significantly under underperforming. Let me try and say that. Underperforming against expectations. Man, this is a... Uh, I totally can't edit that bit out, so we'll just run with it. And um, what do we have today? Oh, what do we have today? Um, do you know? All right, let's 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 unpack this. So we've got a steering wheel and some other stuff and then a clip or something on the back there. Uh, what are you doing to me? It looks like you've given us half of something or something like that, which won't end well. Um, I don't know, maybe this will make sense when it's put together, but uh, Right now, it is looking very dodgy. It's looking like half a motorboat or something. So let's put this together and see if we can figure out what it's meant to be. So from the Guardians of the Galaxy, we have whatever this thing is. It has a steering wheel, so maybe it's part of a car, but I don't think we're gonna be driving anywhere in this. Speaking of driving, why did Walter White fail his driving test? Because he was breaking bad. There's an interesting white element at the front which makes it look a little bit like a jet ski and maybe the ratchety thing at the back is meant to be an engine. The teal plate makes it look like it's floating on water but I really don't think that this is any of those things. I think it's just unfinished. An unfinished gift is very bad for the Guardians of the Galaxy and very bad for the thumbnail. How am I going to make this look interesting? Nothing compares to Colin Creevy clickbait. One thing's for sure, the scoring on this gift is going to be interesting. And so we've reached our final destination, which today is the boy wizard, Harry Potter. Let's see what we've got today. What have we got today? Um, oh, I see what's going on here. We've got the uh, the spinner for the game. I thought that might be behind door number 24. And then we've got Hedwig on a, a, a tile for some reason. Um, I guess Hedwig's meant to be some kind of game piece. Uh, but. Yeah, looks like we've got a spinner. That does look like an interesting printed element. So yeah, let's put this together and we shall take a closer look. It seems the Harry Potter design team has learned from last year's disappointing day 24 when they presented us with a dreidel for the game. The spinner is actually a pretty cool thing. It only stands up like this because I've removed a part. It's a four-sided spinner used to determine the outcome of the game. This suggests you add a brick. This suggests you remove a brick. We've got another add a brick, and then whatever the dark mark commands you to do. The unique printed part is actually a Lego box, although unfortunately it is empty. Looks like the Lego friends stole whatever was inside. If you can find a suitably flat surface, it can be persuaded to spin. The spinner reminds me somewhat of a dreidel or Jewish Beyblade. A dreidel, in all fairness, is a top gift. The other component part of today's gift is none other than Hedwig the Snowy Owl. I've always wondered how long snowy owls live. Now thanks to JK Rowling we know. Six and a half box. Famously an owl's head can rotate 720 degrees before it comes off in your hand. But seriously this is one dark calendar. We've got a dead student from the Chamber of Secrets, a soon to be dead Sirius from the Prisoner of Azkaban, things definitely don't work out for Tonks, and now we're being invited to relive the moment when Hedwig gets snuffed out by Voldy. The owl element, whilst very nice, is nothing new. We get Hedwig in a bunch of sets. It's a nicely sculpted element, and the printing is somewhat good, except for the messed up bit on the beak. 
Actually, to be fair, now that I compare these side by side, maybe it was just meant to look like that. The spinner is a nice enough thing, but the owl feels like an afterthought. Maybe Lego just had a warehouse full of Hedwigs. I mean, it's not like she got a big acting role in the movie or anything. Hedwig, play dead! At least in Harry Potter's favour, we have the Guardians of the Galaxy. And so finally we have all five gifts from behind door number 21 of every LEGO Advent Calendar. But which one of these gifts is of sufficient quality to earn one of LEGO Friends edibles? And which one got spat out of the Guardians of the Galaxy Calendar? Let's award some points! In last place, earning negative one point for the Guardians of the Galaxy is whatever the heck this thing is. Coming in fourth from LEGO City and earning one point is the Festive Lamppost. Middle of the pack is LEGO Friends with three points. And second place goes to LEGO Harry Potter, who takes home four points. Okay, it's not a cupcake stand, but it's got an exclusive element. That means sanity has been returned, and it truly is a good day when you get a minifigure. Taking home five points in Gift of the Day is LEGO Star Wars. But which of these gifts is Christmassy enough to deserve a festive bonus point? A festive bonus point goes to LEGO Friends, because I tasted one of their special cupcakes and I'm feeling very mellow. But do you agree with today's scores? Is there anyone out there brave enough to defend this thing in the comments? And equally, can anybody tell me that Luke Skywalker didn't deserve to beat a bird and a dreidel? As always, please do share your thoughts, opinions and frustrations in the comments. I do read them all, and as you know, I do respond to many of you. Now the big question is, how has today's scoring affected the leaderboard? In last place, looking utterly defeated with 56 points, are the Guardians of the Galaxy. LEGO City is fourth with 61 points and middle of the pack is LEGO Friends with a respectable 63. Star Wars remains in second with 72 points, and with the smallest of leads it's Harry Potter with 75 points. I will of course be back tomorrow with 5 more gifts on day 22. So have a wonderful Wednesday, do stay safe, and I'll see you for some extreme judging tomorrow.